All right, so my beta tank here has been set up at home for, I don't know, a month and a half or so. You're looking at um, Bernard the beta fish. He's a king beta fish. He's huge by comparison to some of my other betas. And this is the Fluval, um, gosh, I forget what they call it, but it's the Fluval five gallon. They have the five gallon, the two and a half gallon. Uh, it's a really nice kind of simple tank. It's about a hundred dollars. Um, but you can see it has kind of your standard overflow right here in the back. So the water overflows into the sponge filter. That's where I put my heater. There's also space in here to put um, like some bio balls and some activated carbon. So I, I put some activated carbon in here, although there's not much flow. It's, it's so low flow that that I, I doubt that the carbon is actually doing much good in removing much, but I do it anyways. And then the water goes back over to here, which is where you can either put another pump, uh, which is where you put the pump, which comes with it. Um, so what I did is I bought this Mopani wood, and uh, it's been in here now. I boiled it for a while, put in some black, uh, black, I guess it's sand, but it's really, it's really thick, um, kind of, kind of coarse sand. Um, and then I bought these, I think they call them beta bulbs. I went to PetSmart, and to be honest, I'm really not a big fan of PetSmart. Um, especially if you see how they treat some of their animals and their bettas in these tiny little bowls, um, telling you that bettas are happy in little bowls. I don't believe that for a second. Um, you know, if you know anything about bettas, you know that they're tropical and they like warm water, so on and so forth. But sometimes it's just the easiest place to buy something, so I did. So anyway, I bought these betta bulbs, and they're just bulbs, you know, you just plant them, you know, in the sand with a little bit sticking up so the light gets to them, um, and you really don't know what they are, and these ones are actually, um, I got some other ones from my one at the office, which I like much more, so I have to, I'm going to have to trim these, but ever since I put those bulbs in, the water's been getting really cloudy, as you can see, so... Um, I've been doing water changes weekly, which I do anyways. It's super easy, you know, on something this small. It's not it's not challenging at all. And I'm hoping that as time goes on, it will start to be a little bit more clear. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the update on this tank. I'm going to stop the video here in a second and put it on a, um, what do you call that, a little time delay, um, so that you can see my process for uh, cleaning this. And then maybe I'll come back at the end and mention a couple things about it. And we're off to the races. So setting up my siphon, putting my warm pre-treated water up high so the siphon will run down, clipping all the plants, siphoning out the dirty water into the bucket below, making sure I get all the poop, moving stuff around a little bit. All right, cleaning the glass with a stainless steel scrubber, then putting the warm water back in while that's happening, emptying the dirty bucket, cleaning up a little bit more using my towel, using the stainless steel brush, gonna plug in the pump, plug in the heater, wipe off the cover screen, put it back in position, kind of hide the wires. That's pretty much it, folks. So I guess that water change process um, where I uh, just quickly uh, vacuumed out like um, all the poop basically that Bernard has done. Um, I was really feeding him way too much at the beginning and he was pooping a lot. Now he's doing quite a bit less because I'm feeding him less and he seems just as happy Water is way less cloudy, obviously. I trimmed the plants because they were blocking the light. Um, really, the plants are so fast growing that I'm just going to consider them a form of macro algae. And uh, for those of you that have um, saltwater tanks especially, you'll know that you have macro algae quite a bit so that it will reduce the phosphates. I'm not worried about phosphates in this tank at all, um, but the plants are going to have to be trimmed quite frequently. Um, I have been pulling out the logs, not on this tank yet. Um, this tank doesn't have any direct light, so there's not, um, there's not much algae growth. But on my tank in my office, my bedded tank, it has kind of the afternoon light comes in and there's no way around it. So I've been pulling out the Mapani wood and scrubbing it down with a toothbrush. Um, and that seems to be keeping it under control quite a bit. Um, let's see what else. I didn't clean out my filter this time. Uh, I had the little sponge filter because I just recently did that, uh, like last week. And I don't, it has such a small bio load in there that I'm not really concerned about it. I also didn't replace the carbon, um, even though I usually do that weekly. Um, I don't think it's really helping that much anyways. Um, let's see, other than that, you can see the difference in it. He's really quite happy now and yeah. That's about it, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and for those of you who actually made it to the end of my video, you'll notice that I did publish a few things 
other than Fish Tank, and that is going to be happening a little bit more. Um, I've decided to kind of put on some of my other hobbies, some family stuff as well. So if you don't want to see that stuff, you can always unsubscribe, but know that there are still going to be updates on my Reef Tank, on my Bedded Tank. Um, and so if you see me post a video that you're not interested in, you can always just, you know, ignore it. Um, but if you do want to unsubscribe, I totally get it. Go right ahead and do so. Anyway, I hope you're all well. Uh, have a wonderful Friday. Take care.